Welcome back to another video. Now I want to demonstrate what this is. It's a candle holder, but it's got this weird little pliers. Whoa. Weird pliers there. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate this to you in a minute. But I, I was just wanted to show you because I came across these again in this book here that I got recently, which is The Cottage Economy by William Cobbett. Uh, there you are there. And he has an interesting little bit that he wrote about these in his book. And uh, I thought it would be fun to read it and then do a little demo. Uh, so this is what he writes about candles. We are not permitted to make candles ourselves. And if we were, they ought seldom to be used in a labourer's family. I was bred and brought up mostly by rush light. And I do not find that I see less clearly than other people. Candles certainly were not much used in English labourers' dwellings in the days when they had meat dinners and Sunday coats. Potatoes and taxed candles seem to have grown into fashion together, and perhaps for this reason, that when the pot ceased to afford grease for the rushes, the potato gorger was compelled to go to the chand chandler's shop for light to swallow the potatoes by, else he might have devoured peeling and all. My grandmother, who lived to be pretty nearly ninety, never, I believe, burnt a candle in her house in her life. I know that I never saw one there, and she, in a great measure, brought me up. She used to get the meadow rushes, such as they tie the hop shoots to the poles with. She cut them when they had attained their full substance, but were still green. The rush, at this age, consists of a body of pith with a green skin on it. You cut off both ends of the rush and leave the prime part, which, on average, may be about a foot and a half long. Then you take off all the green skin, except for about a fifth part of the way down the pith. Thus it is a piece of pith all but a little strip of skin and one part all the way up, which, observe, is necessary to hold the pith together all the way along. The rushes being thus prepared, the grease is melted and put in a melted state into something that is long as the rushes are. The rushes are put into the grease, soaked in it sufficiently, then taken out and laid in a bit of bark taken from a young tree, so as not to be too large. This bark is fixed up against the wall by a couple of straps put round it, and there it hangs for the purpose of holding the rushes. The rushes are carried about sorry, the rushes are carried about in the hand, but to sit but to sit by, to work by, or to go to bed by. They are fixed in stands made for the purpose, some of which are high to stand on the ground, and some low to stand on a table. These stands have an iron port, something like a pair of pliers, to hold the rush in, and the rush is shifted forward from time to time as it burns down to the thing that holds it. So that's what this guy is here. This is a rush light holder, which has a candle holder as well built into it. But some of them just have like a, a curl here or some sort of weight to hold the pliers shut. And um, I'm going to go ahead and make a rush light out of this rush here. Um, you can... So I'm going to just be doing one on its own, but you can just get a baking tray and let me just cut that off around here. You can just get a baking tray, prepare a bunch of these, throw them in the baking tray and pour the grease in on top of them to soak them all together. And let me put that over there. So now I've cut my length and... I'm just going to start peeling down. Now, some I've read some accounts that say to let the, the rush dry. And some people say to wet it in water. I think for like a week or a month or something. And then let it dry then and then peel them. But uh, William Cobbett does not say to let it dry. He says to do it while it's green. And I think it works just fine when it's green. And it burns when it's green as well. Um, so I don't see any need to dry it. I'm sure it might burn better when it's dry. But for me, it's fine as it is. And I've, I've done this before. And the light that comes off of this is impressive. I am. Um, it's like much larger than the candlelight there. So this is the tedious bit, but if you're have a nice quiet evening, maybe you can put a movie on and just do something monotonous like this if you want to 
make your own lights for free, might I add. So you, sorry, I'm just checking the width of this. Um, yeah, for free, like you're using your waste from your pan and some grass and you have infinite light as long as you can get food to, <laughs> to make the grease with. Um, but this is what people would have done back in medieval Ireland. A lot of medieval Europe, I believe, would have done this. Um, because candles were too expensive. So only like the clergy and important people would have been able to afford the wax. Or maybe some people would have had wax candles, but they would save them for special occasions. Um, and would have burnt rush lights and um, now I'm gonna skip ahead <laughs> sorry because this is a lot more tedious than I was hoping uh, I'm gonna skip ahead to when I have this all done and I'll see you then all right now we're back I've got my rush done I'll give you a closer look at that so you can see there I've got a small strip of green and the rest of this the pith is exposed and I just have this little dish here with some melted fat in it and I'm just going to run this through There we go. That's all soaked in the grease. Now if you just give me another minute, I'm going to let this dry out and then I'm going to set it up onto the rush light holder. All right now, that it's dried out a little bit, I'm going to give it a light. There we go. And then you just lift up the weight. You can drop it in there. Yeah, how about that? So you can see the flame is quite a bit bigger than the uh, candle and you can kind of control the burn by the angle you set it at but if you go too high you can see it's starting to go down. If you go too high it will put itself out. But there you have it. Free light. And a, a benefit to this is like if you're reading a book like you can have the light right on top of what you're reading or what you're writing um which gives you a little bit of a benefit over having the candles like that but there you go i think that's pretty cool i thought it was the coolest thing when i came across it a couple of years ago and i really liked that write-up that william cobbett did about them so I hope that you enjoyed this little, quick little video on rush lights, how to make them, and that you give it a go yourself at home. They're very, very easy, very simple, and a great way to use some household waste as well.